Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. It's May 9th and uh, several days ago I uh, had the motor fired up uh, for the first time. Started great. I mean it was probably 20 something flips uh, and you'll see this in the video. Um, and uh, everything seemed okay. It, it, it was alright. I had a little problem with the top end and the bottom end. Um, but uh, it was probably, I don't know, 15 minutes with the cowling off and about another 15 with the cowling on. Uh, and I got through most of the little issues. There were a couple um, that I'm going to end up covering later on in the video. Um, because this is going to be really piecemeal. It's like three or four days worth of video. I'm going to try to get uh, into one because it's all little bits and pieces. So hopefully you've got the patience to watch through it. Um, so anyway, what I ended up doing was uh, the problems I had with the carburetor. And even, even though I think I addressed them, um, later on in the video, um, working with the Tillotson carb is, is a little bit different than working with the Walbro. With the Walbro, I know the problems and I know how to fix the problems. I've never worked with a Tillotson before. Um, and my little stumbling, stuttering problem, uh, that's gone. And uh, it's, it, it, it's quite amazing that with the, uh, with the fuel pump, that the tolerance underneath that little cap's a lot tighter between this one and the wall bro, where um, where the little tube comes off, I had to go in with a drill bit and hand drill it because even though there was nothing sitting below it, it was the brass tube where it was just down inside of it uh, that got in the way of the of the pump. And so when I was trying to start it yesterday to get it fired back up, it was probably about two and a half hours uh, of of work on it to try to figure out what the problem was and it was that little tube uh, I just had to go in with a drill and just drill it and get rid of it so it it left the space back available where it goes up underneath the regular little cover um, all problems went away so it's running great right now so it makes me very happy um, I'm still got to figure out what I want to do for you guys next week because I'm still working I, I got every day going on until the 18th that's my next day off with the hopes that the weather's going to be nice enough not to fly this monster over here uh, to go get the uh, at least bring the Piper Cub up and get, get a couple flights in with that one because I have not flown since the end of September so this is the longest in my uh, career in the hobby that I've gone without flying a plane I, I normally fly all winter long indoors and this this year was the first year that I took almost eight months off of flying so I'm not afraid of my abilities um, just want to go out and you know get some wind out of the wings on a plane that I've got you know three four hundred flights in and I know what it's going to do so anyway a um, little helpful hint if you're if you're trying to find the right size wire drill don't spill them on the floor that's 50 that's 50 wire size drill bits I get to figure out which order they go back inside that container so that's not going to be fun that'll be a probably an hour-long project but that can wait right now so anyway what I'm going to do is uh, take everything upstairs and probably spend the next three three and a half hours of trying to edit a video that I consider uh, good enough to put on YouTube for you guys so anyway uh, wish me luck in that and then uh, as I can, I do still have some little stuff I need to take care of and I can do that after work. So I'm going to try to, once again, at least have something piecemeal together for you guys for next Friday after that. So uh, anyway, once again, I'll see you guys uh, very soon back down at the shop. All right, we're outside, and we're going to try to get this first start done. Uh, it's all fueled up. Um, everything's ready to go. I've got the, uh, sorry about that. I've got the, I got the carb set up to what Tillotson wants. Tillotson wants one and a quarter out on the high end and one out on the low end, and it's pretty close to what you end up doing with the, uh, with the wall bros. But let's go ahead and get it choked, and uh, let's just hope that it's going to run. Um, if you can, 
I'm, my problem is the tail. You see how much is on there? If you can just stand back there, you don't have to. You don't have to really hold on to it. Just, just you'll, in case. you'll know. <laughs> All right. I just want to see fuel coming up through here. All right, here comes the fuel. Yeah. Okay. It's breathing. I got a feeling that's going to be a little bit too high on the idle side. Let me bump that down a little bit. Let's find out. Sounds a little too fat on the top end, but the thing is, it's running. transition out still top look at that smoke coming off that painted muffler <laughs> all right the cowling is now on let's see how much nicer she goes hopefully better with the cowling on Turn again. 
Ready? Hmm? No, it's not really happy with that cowling. That's enough for today. It's it's we got a problem with the with the uh, throttle cable, so uh, I'll work on that. But at least she's running, so that'll give me something to do because uh, I still got probably two more weeks before I'll got an availability to get her to the field to fly. So, um, but at least it's running. So it's I think a lot of the problems we're having is with the carb cable. Uh, there's too much slop in it. It's a little teeny L. It's it's almost like an L gimbal on the bottom and it's too sloppy up and down. So I'll see if I can go in and A, either make a, a whole new piece or modify the one that's already on there. So, uh, so anyway, we'll give it a thumbs up for the day. All right, everyone, welcome back to the shop. It's Saturday night, about eight o'clock and the day is the 5th of May. Now, I got the engine fired up, as you saw earlier in the video. The engine was first fired up uh, on May 1st um, and it, it's, you saw that I was just kind of trying to get it was short little run cycles trying to get everything uh, get the engine warmed up and try to get the the high end and low end uh, try to get them set up right uh, because what the what the manufacturer tells you to set these things up for first of all it's a good starting point for a chainsaw not for an airplane uh, because the chainsaws will run hotter than the airplanes will because the airplanes have a big blast of air cooking across the fins on the uh, on the cylinders where you don't have that in the uh, uh, in the the chainsaws. So what happened was when we put the when we put the cowling back on, um, it fired up and ran for probably about 15, 20 seconds. Had a couple little stumbles because it was still a little bit too fat on the top end. And then it seemed like it had a backfire. Now, it's you probably really didn't hear it so much in the uh, in the video. That's why I put the notation in the video um, that you know listen for it. it. It was really hard to hear and it didn't come out that well. But the way of the way a backfire works in a two-stroke is different from a backfire in a four-stroke because typically in a four-stroke, the when it backfires, you've got the intake completely closed off and the exhaust opening or the opposite way around you've got the exhaust closed and it's just a late fire and the exhaust is still trying to get back up through the intake it does the same thing on the uh, two strokes but once you get the cylinder down far enough so if you've got a late fire on us on a two stroke you do have the because the exhaust in the the exhaust port in the in the intake port are at different levels but there's a point in time when they're both exposed um, now it's it's a weird little overlap in the two strokes so what happened was even though it it had the pop coming out the exhaust it had this kind of higher pitched squeal kind of pop coming out of the out of the intake so that's kind of how i knew that that's what it, that's what it appeared to be so i decided that the best thing to do would be to get hold of a uh a small gear puller and luckily a buddy of mine uh, Brian had a gear puller so I took the gear puller and got everything set up and when I was trying to pull the flywheel off was when I realized that behind the flywheel was not a set of points I thought it was going to be some points that either a had a bad spring so the points were floating uh, and, and I wanted to get inside and check it out but what I realized, and you can't see it with this camera, I, I can try to take pictures with my camera, but you can't see it. What's well, actually behind this one, because a little bit, a little bit of research later on, uh, when I was looking through Jaeger, I found uh, an old uh, online. I found an old uh, uh, manual for it. It's already got electronic ignition in it, and so when you look, which you can see just through the little teeny holes. Uh, not only does it say it's made in Germany, because the whole motor is made in Germany, 
it's also a Bosch. Uh, so, you know, hopefully, you know, it's not a Lucas, so it, it'll work. So that's what it's got. It's, it's actually got a Bosch uh, uh, electronic ignition inside that engine. So, so the problem was not with the, uh, with the points because there's no points in there. So we don't have to worry about points in condenser because that's all being taken care of by the electronic ignition. So either it had a bad, bad power coming off the coil, which I don't think was the problem, or you might be able to hear the, uh, the engine. I'm trying to see if we can get any light in there where you can see. I don't think so. But anyway, where I think the problem is coming from is not up on top. It's, it's in here. Because right now, the way it's set up, this is loose and sloppy. And, and it needs to be tightened up because it flexes a lot. So I may make one of these things out of some thick brass. Try to machine it down as close as I can get it and see if it works. If not, a buddy of mine, Greg Camus, who's the uh, uh, he's a fabricator, I can get hold of him and he can, uh, he can make something for me. But what the problem is, is when the throttle, let me see if I can get this set up so I can make sure that you guys are looking at it. When the throttle moves up and back, as you can see, there's this weird little delay and sometimes it doesn't go all the way. And sometimes it does. So, as you can see right there. So what I think the problem is, even though this is loose, by doing a further inspection, this really isn't the problem. It may be a problem, but it's not the main problem. And this is something you could not see when you were uh, running the engine because you were standing in front of it and worried more about what was going on in front and not what was going on inside. This is what I've got going. I've got binding in this cable. And as you can see the cable in the background, you see it? That is the problem. So you can see how it goes up and then it drops down. That was the problem that I was having with uh, with the throttle and it's very possible that that was the problem with why there was either a a lot of fuel going in there with the late ignition or b not enough fuel going in there the way it throttled up and when it throttled back that's where a little backfire came from so I'm hoping that that was that was the problem so my goal and it's it's not going to be because this plane is not going to probably be fired up again until if you're waiting for this one it is the fifth my last day off was the first my next day off is the 18th so i've got two and a half weeks of non-stop work because uh we just got so much stuff going on and my boss um got shipped out to sioux falls south dakota for for a week and a half to go train some people so um so what's going to happen is I'm going to keep trying to work on this the best I can in little pieces like this. Um, so if it's a possibility to get it back outside and fire it up, um, don't worry, I'll, I'll have this camera running. Um, but you know, there's there's no there's there's no guarantees now until uh, you know possibly the 18th. So um, I don't know if the lettering is going to be done by then, and I'm not pushing Mike right now uh, to get it done because I can't even get up there to get the decals until you know the 18th so um, so that might be a couple more weeks not to say that I can't get the first flight in on this plane without the lettering on the side that's not the biggest part of the deal so I just want to get the uh, I want to get the engine running to the point where I'm happy and once that's done um, you know, it's just a CG, and it's uh, I've got I've got my buckshot down there, not my buckshot, but my number six uh, uh, shotgun uh, pellets. I've got that ready to go. So if if I can, if if nothing else, at least get uh, Paul or uh, or Johnny to come on over here, just so we can get the plane lifted and get the get the balance on it. So I know how much I've got to put in that spot to get it ready to go. Um, then it's just, you know, the stickers, the stickers and the paint, and that's, you know, give me a few hours, I should be able to have all that completed. So that's, that's not the, uh, that's not the hard part. It's the, uh, it's, it's just finding the time to do it. So. All right, everyone. Good morning. Welcome back to the pit. Uh, it's supposed to be raining right now. It's blue sky. To the south, it's raining, and that's fine. They can have it. So, um, 
So we're good. I've got about an hour, uh, you know, probably just about an hour to work on the plane. So I figured, you know what, drag it outside. We're going to work on the, uh, uh, the throttle cable. What I did is I dug through my stash and uh, I've got open tube with a little, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a black golden rod. Um, so we're going to use this inside. What I've got to do, because it can't make the bend that you'd want to use uh, some thin wire through the golden rod. So 256, I've got these little things and you're supposed to solder on and uh, you normally just solder it onto a, uh, to a piece of wire, which is what I did with the cable. So what I could do, because I still have options, I've got some thinner cable. I can go to cable, but what I think I'm going to do is, sorry about that, I've got some little 256 threaded couplers. I'm going to make it fit inside the hole and then solder it. So I'll have 256 on either end for adjustability through the uh, through the tubing and then uh, I'll pull all that stiff, the, the stuff that's in there right now out and get everything measured to length and uh, go ahead and install a new one and then when that's all taken care of um, I'll show you guys and hopefully hopefully that problem will be gone all right it's fixed and it's looking real good I'll show you guys what we're looking at what I did is I changed over I, I kind of trumpeted the end of this so when it switches when it goes in and out it can't hang up on anything this as you can see right now it's not strapped to anything it's just moving freely inside so I'm, I'm still gonna put a couple uh, little zip ties here and here to make sure that it does not move but here's where the important part is down underneath here's what we're looking at that's uh, that's idle and as we trans up, transit up through it, it does not, there's no slop. So, and it's working very nicely. I don't know if you'll be able to see inside the carb, but it's, uh, th there is no problem there. So what I want to do, the next thing I'm going to address, I've got to take the carb off for it. When you see right down in this general vicinity, when it throttles up, it pulls off. So what I'll do, take it off. There's an E-clip on the back side of this. I'll get a, uh, I got some real thin washers from back in the day when I used to, uh, might not be big enough when I used to slot car race, but I've got some real small spacers down to one thousandth of an inch spacers. I'll put some spacers either on this side or on this side. I'll look in and see which way it needs to sit inside the carb, but I'll get that taken care of off camera. And then we'll tentatively call the carburetor area and the throttle done with the hopes that next time I fire it up, some of the problems will be gone away. And that could also be uh, an issue with the, uh, with the throttle with it slipping back and forth. There might be a little bit of an air gap leak there. I I'm not sure, but um, uh, that I'm going to work on next. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll get another problem solved. So that's about it for today. It's almost time for me to go upstairs and get ready to head back to work. So I will uh, probably be back down here later on this afternoon. So when I'm back down here, doing some work you'll be back in again that didn't so anyway I'm uh, pretty much done uh, now for the morning time to head upstairs head into work and I'll come back down here if the weather's still nice look looks like it's gonna be nice uh, when I get home from work uh, this evening I'll uh, throw everything back outside in the pit and uh, we'll get a little more work done so I'll see you when I'm back All right, it is late in the evening. We're pushing eight o'clock, the sun's already set. Let me show you what I was able to take care of when I got home. All right, with the hopes that everything is gonna be light enough for you to see. Okay, I came in, I got my little springs attached here, and then up here, it's just a matter of using some, uh, just some regular uh, uh, nitro fuel line just to hold this thing so it's pinched shut. I, I may change this later on, but right now, that's how I've got all my other planes, even my other giant scale stuff is set up with that. And uh, you know, even if it's every year or so, you're putting new ones on, it's not that big of a deal. What I ended up using for these springs down here, 
Um, I went to the hardware store and got the looking for the size I wanted, but instead of spending um, three bucks per spring, I got one of these things, which you can see they call it a plate hanger. And what it does is it comes with two springs that seem to be just the right length, plus these little brackets, which won't get used for anything. So, what I ended up doing was I just had to clip the springs down and then put them on the tail of the airplane. Then after I got done with that, I decided to uh, go to work on the, uh, uh, the carburetor. So I came in, this I'm gonna leave the way it is right now. It's much more firm, there's less flex, because what I did, it's kinda hard for you to see it, right underneath this E-clip, and it's really hard, it's a 22,000 spacer. Yes, I made that myself just by <laughs> by uh, by grinding down a, a 3 16 washer and then uh, you know hitting it with a with a metal file. So, uh, but it's what it did is I don't know if I can show you doing all this with one hand, but when it, it pivots back and forth, sorry about that. When it opens and closes, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this by myself. Anyway, let's try it this way. Well, anyway. When it opens and closes, here we go, let's try it this way. Um, the little butterfly valve can no longer dance back and forth. So what I did was this little shim, when it's all the way in, there's, there's a little bit of play on this side. There's an openness on this side. When you come on this side and it's all the way open, there's a little bit of play on this side. But I had to do that so that there was a balance. So as of right now, anywhere you put this throughout the whole thing of motion, just at mid-range, you get just a little bit of sliding back and forth, and there's nothing I can do about that unless I just went ahead and got a whole new carb. So I'm going to test this out and see how it works. It should be fine. Um, then what I did to make it so that hopefully less issues with setting up the carburetor, this little tube will have... A piece of vacuum line going from it back through the firewall. I'll probably send it back through. I'll probably send it either back through here. I could just send it right next to this if I want to. But I'll send a piece of vacuum line back into the fuselage. What this does is with the fuel pump on it, with the pump side, the change in pressure inside the cowling affects on how well this can pump fuel up to the carb and that may have been part of the problem i'm not sure um, but if you isolate it if you take it out of the pressure area behind the cowling and put it into the fuselage which the pressure should remain relatively constant you won't have an issue you know these things are made for chainsaws there's not too much airflow inside a chainsaw you're not you don't have you know 50 miles 60 miles an hour worth of wind cooking by it so all my other big planes have this done to the carb so it's a little bit bigger than i wanted to but the way that the hole is on the tillotson over on the on the edge is how the wall bro set up and it's just a little teeny hole and you can use a thin line this is a big hole right in the middle so instead of patching this up, sealing it, and then drilling a hole in the side, I just put a bigger piece in. So I'll just get a little bit bigger piece of uh, fuel line um, and put it on here and just run it through the firewall. So that should be good. So this is ready to get bolted back on, and that's ready to come back inside until the next time I can find some time to come down in the shop. As I keep progressing through, uh, I'll keep you all informed on how things are going. So. Hopefully, all will go well.